All right, so John Shirley, I am the uh, products planning manager and the strategy person for Flash at Dell Storage. When I say Dell Storage, really talking about network connected storage. Work very close with the, with the server team too, so we can help answer some of those questions. But I'm going to be focusing primarily on Dell Storage and more specifically on what we're doing with our uh, Dell SE line, which is where uh, the compelling architecture came from. Mm. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is, is uh, put up this slide here. Uh, I'm from Minnesota. That's where uh, Compellent was founded. And so I was working on this in my, uh, in my home office, and my little four-year-old son came up to me and said, Dad, why do you have so many hockey pucks on the screen? But that's not what this is supposed to be representing, so no hockey pucks. Um, but I did want people to kind of guess and, and, uh, and what this represents. And this is going to lead into more of the Dell strategy of Flash. I think guesses on what 300 plus means. Nothing provisioning, good guess. Take one more guess and I'll just tell you. Volumes. Volume, that's another good guess, but it's not volumes. That does look like a volume and how we represent that. But these are actually supposed to be SSDs. So we have systems out there with well over 300 SSDs per array. All right. So if you think about where we were a couple of years ago and we had a very small number of SSDs, we're starting to see customers starting to buy very large systems with SSDs. This particular one uh, that we're talking about here is like th over 300 terabytes of flash capacity in an array. Now, if you think about that, you might think, well, this customer needs a lot of IOPS. In fact, this customer here was running less than 50,000 IOPS. So they weren't looking for the IOPS, but what they were, what they were looking for is the latency. And so, you know, in the, historically we did a small amount of flash and we used arterian technology, some people use caching, and they both have their merits. But what we found is for a lot of applications, they need a consistent latency across the entire storage pool, and that just didn't cut it, right? So we're starting to see this really big trend of customers buying very large amounts of flash behind arrays. And again, it's not necessarily to go after the million IOPS. All right, so what is our strategy for Dell? And, you know, the first one is kind of motherhood and apple pie, right? We want to take Flash mainstream. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, one of two ways. So we are adopting the, the, the higher density and the lower cost solutions, and this really means MLC. So if you look at uh, storage array vendors, we were the first ones out there from a major storage array vendor to offer 1.6 terabyte or the read intensive uh, drives. We call them read intensive and write intensive versus MLC, TLC, SLC, just because the stuff is moving so quickly that we didn't want to shift this on our customers every six months to a year. So what we call read intensive drives are really uh, MLC drives that help lower the cost. And we're the first ones out there to get to market. The other angle that we're coming at this now, we just released an array, it's $25,000 for an all-flash array. All right, so a great starting point for a customer, and we're not compromising performance. So we, even, we, we really did. We sat down and talked about it and said, hey, look, this $25,000 all flash array is really fast. Should we slow it down? And we made a conscious decision, no, we're not going to slow this thing down. We're going to let it run as fast as we can. $25,000 all flash array gets over 100,000 IOPS. And when I say IOPS, I'm not talking just the pure marketing number. These are OLTP IOPS. So very, very fast array. Uh, and then finally, we're, uh, go ahead. Which, which array it is, the 25,000? Yeah, so it's uh, SC4020. Okay. So it's a 2U box. Uh, the 25,000 configuration is six 480 gig SSDs. That can scale. It's, uh, you know, we call it an all flash array. Can, uh, you can absolutely add hard drives to that as well to make it full tiering capability. Uh, and the last bullet there is uh, we're not going to go chase niche markets. When we say niche markets, we're really talking about customers needing the uh, five, 10 million IOPS, and you know those arrays costing millions of dollars. We're, we're gonna stay away from that. We'll partner with people to go deliver those to our customers and sell them through the Dell channel, but we're not gonna go out and actively develop these drives, uh, these products, because it's just, quite honestly, fairly niche and just not, our, not what we wanna get invested into. Are you seeing a model where people are doing the essentially short stroking on SSD to get a little latency for Responsiveness. No, so what do you mean by short stroking on short SSD? Is where you know the, the original term is short stroking, where absolutely, yep. yeah. So they, they they would do it for low latency, and they wouldn't necessarily use the capacity that they have. So the so the answer is yes, and no. So when I, <laughs> no, that's a good answer. So the answer really is um, if you look at these SSD drives, uh, a good example is the 1.6 terabyte. So you could take that 1.6 terabyte and have a lot of flash capacity. What you can also do is short stroke that, right? Make it 800, and what that, it doesn't necessarily buy you read performance, it can buy you a little bit of write performance, mm -hmm. and, but it buys you endurance. It buys you wear leveling. Wear leveling, like, exactly. Not that anyone cares about that, they exactly. just care that when they have a disk in the system, it gives them consistent I.O., consistent latency. Yes. And 
to find the amount of storage that they get. Yeah. And underneath the covers, most customers are not going to say, is this MLC or SLC? Well, some might. I, you would say that if you're buying an all-flash array, right? If you don't have any rotational disks. Those of us at the table may say that, but not necessarily everyone needs to know the details. They need to know the guarantees of consistency and performance. It sounds like exactly. you're bringing to the table a lot of those guarantees, and that's, that's awesome. And, that, and that's why we bucket it into write intensive and read intensive, because well, honestly, we could take an MLC drive, a consumer grade flash MLC drive, what we call over provisioning, so short stroking in SSD world is called over provisioning. We can over provision a lot and sell that 1.6 as an 800 or a 400 and give that consistency, and that's actually There's what we're doing. There's a cost trade-off for that, obviously. You're paying Pay. for a 1.6 gig drive. Right. Yeah. So, so even, yep, it's exactly right. You might be paying the same price for that drive, so but you, you're going to have the capacity. So with a 25K right. all-flash array, you're playing that balance of giving, you're not targeting the niche for the super, super high performance, because you don't, you don't need to, but you're providing an all-flash array at a low price point for a broad section of the market. Exactly. Yep, we're trying to bring all-flash arrays to mainstream. So can I understand what you were saying before? So the, the stuff that you were selling was about 300. So the, the capacity that they bought, you're actually saying that it's the over-provision capacity within the drives that you're using to handle things like wear leveling so that you can, you know, when that cell dies, you write it off to a new cell hit somewhere over here. Yeah, and I've got, yep. hopefully... Whoops. Okay, so when you talk about that how That shouldn't much be blank like that, so I, something happened in the formatting. Because I was going to get into the details of exactly what the different drive types that we have are. Okay. Um, and I don't know I, if I could probably change I will that. have a question, well, sort of. Go ahead. Marketing type question. How do you count it when you say we shipped X? Do you count the amount that's actually in the drive, or do you count the usable capacity? The, We'll do it both ways, depends on how the question is asked. Yeah, so, <laughs> I like the honesty. Nice. So if we're, if we're talking, you know, the slide that I just went past here is, um, again, I don't know what happened to all the, the text there, but this is, um, this is recent data. This is uh, up from IDC, and it shows flash capacity ship for hybrids, and unfortunately all the... I can get it for you. Okay. We'll just switch ducks. Okay, that sounds good. So that 200 petabytes... Um, Sold had a had a hundred petabytes of usable. <laughs> <laughs> hundred petabytes we, of usable. We, we, oh, we don't know. I'm saying if you, if you again, it depends on how. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I don't know how we answered. I wasn't involved with how we answered that question, but I believe that is I believe that is usable. Usable space. I'll okay. have to go dig that one out. But hey, there we go. That's better. Thank you. So really quickly, you asked the I'm going to skip to this one real quick because you asked the question about drives. And so, write intensive, read intensive. Try to take you through some of the different drive types really quick. Write intensive again. We started out with the SLC. We've transitioned some of the drives to EMLC, especially the larger capacity drives. But we are seeing MLC being able to enter into the picture here and being able to offer solutions for write intensive drives with MLC. Um, on the read MLC, uh, the read intensive side, it's really about MLC today, CMLC is, we, we do have products out there with that. And then we're looking at TLC, right? We can't ignore that one. And I'll get into some of the technology that we use to protect these drives. We can actually offer both these drives in the same system. So we can offer the, the better write performance of the write intensives, get the good read performance of the read intensive, and get the best of everything, including endurance. Um, but going down the list, I'll just hit the high points here. Uh, Endurance-wise, so we, we tend to talk about drive writes per day in the industry because it's easy to understand. Uh, the cool part about drive writes per day is that we have a mechanism within our array. We call it phone home. We can go collect all the drive logs that we have in the field, except for the, you know, the government accounts that put us behind a firewall and stuff like that. But otherwise, we can take all those drive logs, send it home to us. So we've collected a lot of great data over the years that says exactly how much drive uh, where is going on in the field. We do that, and we also show it to our customers. So we had a lot of customers afraid of using uh, some of the MLC technologies. We put it right in the GUI so they know exactly what that looks like. And I can, I can actually share with you some of the endurance data if you guys want to see it. I've got a Pareto chart that we can walk through if you guys care. Is that something you guys would want to see? or? Okay, so I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and then, um, so oh, going back to endurance. So 10 to 30 drive rights per day. Uh, on the lower capacities, we'll use the 30 drive rights per day just because you can burn through those drives a little bit quicker at 200 gigabytes of capacity versus having a, a, an 800 gig capacity point. Uh, what else is interesting in this chart? Read IOPS, you can see both read IOPS and these drives are phenomenally fast now. Uh, they have a more marketing number of 100,000 IOPS, but realistically, they're about 30,000 IOPS if you get a decent uh, block size. 
Uh, and where they really start to differentiate is on the right IOPS and right bandwidth. So you can use uh, fewer of the right intensive drives to get your right performance up versus the read intensive drives. And I expect those read intensive drives over the years, once we start getting the TLC and more density, those numbers will start coming down. That's my prediction. Um, and we're going to do that just to, so we can get better cost points. All right, I'm going to go back up to this slide now that we have uh, some of the words on there. And this is, uh, again, going back to IDC, it's showing uh, the capacity shipped uh, for hybrid. And the exciting part for us is that, you know, when we started this, uh, this effort of what we call our flash optimized array two years ago, uh, we had a fairly small portion of the market from a flash capacity ship, really looking at compellent. Uh, we've grown significantly to the point where we're, we're number two now in terms of flash capacity ship for a hybrid array. So uh, very, very close to getting to that number one spot. We, with the momentum that we've built up here and now with the introduction of our $25,000 flash array, we really expect this momentum continuing to get into the number one spot. What does it mean when you say a significant portion of your hybrid arrays are actually <laughs> off? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> It's really a, a statement in terms of how analysts and people want to describe all flash arrays or hybrid arrays. So by definition on some of the analysts, whether you're talking to Gartner or IDC or some of the big firms, the definition of an all flash array is obviously all flash. Mm -hmm. And there's also definitions in there that say you shouldn't be allowed to add hard drives to it. So from our perspective, I was very firm on this one. If I were to go create a system, and block out hard drives, that creates no value to my customer, right? So we weren't gonna go to do that. So we, we don't show up in all flash array reports because we have the ability to, to ship hard drives okay. in the system. We, we made a conscious decision. We, we have to put up with some of the, hey, where's Dell in the report? But other than that. Hard drives versus buying a whole new. Exactly, right. So, but it's, it's the right decision. In fact, I'd say was, the last I looked, it was 95% of our systems were hybrid. It's growing, the all flash rate portion is growing. But even the, the customers that have those large pools, so the customer that had 300 drives in their system, they have a little bit of hard drive in there. And they do that because they want to take inaccessible snapshots. There's no reason to keep that in flash. So that gets migrated right down to, to hard drive. We compress that data and shove it away. Nice. So. But we fully expect hybrid to, to continue being you know, 90 plus percent of our shipments just because the value is so great there. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what, when I say flash up to my system, um, this is really talking about our tiering capabilities in our array. So Compellent was founded all around tiering capabilities, being able to move data at the time from 15K, 10K, and then 7200 came. Uh, a couple of years later, we added the ability to do SSDs. And when we started seeing these, uh, these lower cost MLC drives come out, we, we stopped and took a look and said, how do we get these into our system? And very quickly, we came to the conclusion that we should use our tiering technology. So what we do now is we'll write. All of our writes will go into really high performance, uh, well, write intensive SSDs. We do write 10, so we do it very quickly. And five minutes, okay. And the ability to do this um, does a couple things for us. One, caching, write caching on the arrays kind of goes away because we can write so quickly into these flash devices into RAID 10, no RAID overhead, very, very quickly. So we actually turn off write caching arrays when we have this solution. Now after we do that, if a customer takes a snapshot, we call them replays, but when a customer takes a snapshot on the array, those blocks become read only. It doesn't make any sense to keep those uh, blocks on relatively expensive SSDs. So what we do is we convert it to RAID 5 in the background and we put them onto read intensive SSDs. And once that occurs, now we get the full read performance of the SSDs. We free up more room in tier one so we can use a smaller amount of the expensive flash. And overall, we lower the system costs dramatically by, by, by this ability. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we have the tier three down there. I put it in a different color and shoved it off to the side because we do want to keep iterating that this is our all flash array solution. You know, I'm going to put it in quotes, but we are always going to add a hard drive. And, and if a customer wants to use 15K, 10K, 72, we really don't care what they use down in tier three. Uh, we've been surprised. We've seen some uh, decently significant amount of customers putting 15K into tier three. Kind of shocked me. We expected it to be all 7200, but for that particular customer, this was uh, database applications. They wanted to use 15K there. Uh, I'm going to skip through this just because we don't have time. It walks through how we do some of the, the snapshots and data progression technology. 
Uh, really quickly on the endurance, so this is data that I pulled. This is a couple months old now. Um, but this is data that we pulled for all the drives. So this is a Pareto chart for any statistic geeks out there. Um, what this is showing here is these are the read intensive drives and the write intensive drives mapped out drive writes per day from all the drives that came into the, through the field. The dotted lines over there are the specifications. So out of 30 full drive writes per day for the write intensive drives, the read intensive drives here, three full drive writes per day for these particular drives. And, and just plotted out where customer drives are mapped today. And as you can see, we have orders of magnitude of headroom left in the systems for, for, these, for these drives to, uh, to live in the field. And so that's really the reason why we came out with a $25,000 all-flash array is that we said our tiering technology is great. We do have a lot of customers who would be pushing the boundaries in terms of endurance and they need the right performance. However, we knew a lot of customers would be great with just using those read intensive SSDs. And the performance is phenomenal on those drives. And so, um, long story short, we're, we're capturing all this data, we're monitoring it. I probably look at it a little bit too much, but um, very, very intriguing data in terms of what customers are actually using in the field. Just curious from a write intensive and yeah. you know, uh, wear leveling and running out of writes. I mean, when I was at EMC and we had gone through, they had collected all the data, mm -hmm. the question was hey, how many of these drives have we had to replace because we ran out of the ability <clears> to write? And the answer was zero. So I'm wondering if. Have you actually encountered environments where you've collected enough data that you've actually exceeded the life of the drive? I imagine the answer is probably no. No, and so that's, this, is, this is every drive that we've shipped. Mm -hmm. And so if you see 30 full drive rights per day, we've got one sitting up here close to 10. Sure. I know exactly who that customer and what they're doing, right? And so we've reached out to some of these uh, customers who are using the drives a little bit heavier. And that's kind of the benefit out. of them is no matter what we throw at them, we're really not going to hit that threshold, which is great because mm -hmm. then we don't have to deal with that, like, oh, no, you can't write any more data. Yep, and okay. right, and so the, the fear of the, the right endurance stuff is kind of going away a little well, bit, right? Where leveling has really paid off because Absolutely. the consumer grade level yeah, we're dead. Absolutely. Uh, and then the, you know, a little bit more on that point too is that when we're talking to vendors, you know, we're able to start reducing the costs and start. And the other part, drive rights per day is one way to look at it. We also have gas gauges. So as you know, you were, if you're at EMC looking at this stuff, typically customers were writing larger chunk sizes than the winter spec. So the gas gauges themselves are even, even less. And I think I've got one minute left here. Um, just really quickly on the trends and what we're seeing. So the SSD trends are going to continue through 2016, right? I kind of blew through one of the charts that we have, but we have full line of sight into seeing seven, 16 uh, terabyte drives towards the end of this year. And then even looking at what if we brought back, say, a three and a half inch drive and we can get really big capacity points and start talking about flash for archiving uses. So we fully expect that trend to continue. Um, we really start seeing, this is across the board, and this has really already happened, vendors are turning away from just focusing on 100% on performance. How do we go get those cost points down to get it to the broader part of the market? And that, that, that's going on very, very quickly. Um, protocols, both on the array and on the de devices are gonna change. So NVMe on the devices, we talked about that. You can fully envision maybe someday we put that into our array. And oh, by the way, maybe we have an interface of NVMe out the front instead of fiber channelized SCSI. What if we put NVMe to the front, direct connected it to a server? That'd be pretty cool technology that we're taking a look at. Uh, and then TLC. So I mentioned that before. It's, it's really right around the corner. Sorry, that line got cut off there. It's right around the corner. And um, we're, we're fully expecting that to see uh, TLC and, and enterprise grade solutions very, very soon. We think we have the best line of sight to get to it because we can put our MLC or SLC in front of TLC and really get out there first. So we're really excited about getting that one out the door. And the new form factors, right? So two and a half inch drives, again, three and a half inch drives we're looking at. What if we start looking at the smaller form factor, M.2s or something else? This is really evolving very quickly. Um, it's gonna be another fun couple of years, so.